Hey everybody, DSS Dark Star Storm here with Wing It Wednesday's Teledashing. Um, this will just be some matches where I run a particularly Teledash heavy Zelda, just so you guys can kind of see what you should do with Teledashing and what you shouldn't do. So without further ado, and I rhymed, let's switch to post commentary mode so I'm not stutter stuttering throughout the entire match. Okay. Okay, let's get started. Um, I will not be talking for all of every match. I will just say what needs to be said at the beginning of each match so you guys can focus on the gameplay and not what I'm saying. Because it it is hard to see two... Um, to have vid video and audio stimuli that you're both... that you're thinking about at the same time. So, um... I usually take most links to Dreamland. Um, it kind of limits his stage control with projectiles. It limits yours too, but you are not going to be using your dins to block Link that much. His his nair and his projectiles get through dins very easily, just like butter. So what you want to be using dins for is um, what you want to be using dins for is off stage traps or setups and finishers to throw them into. Now, for teledashing, what you want to do is mix up teledashing with a lot of dash dancing as well, so that you can confuse him so that he tries to throw out one move and you're actually not even there. Um, Link, despite what most people might think, even though he has been sped up in Project M, a lot of his moves still have a good amount of lag time on them. His jab is probably his quickest move, but if you can dodge them, you can actually get in pretty easily. So that's what I would be aiming for. Uh, you do not want to be above Link, especially on a platform, even if you can teledash away. He can hit you with up air before you have the chance to do that. Naru's love will not save you. If you do place dins, I would place them on the ground, as that's the hardest place for him to hit them. He could only hit them with uh, projectiles thrown to the ground, or he could hit them with a shuffled nair. But in that case, you could just teledash behind him and punish that. So I'd, I'd be placing them on the ground if, if you don't want to do it in the air, or you can't do it in the air. Place them on the ground. They sort of serve like his bombs do when he plants them. And, actually, I believe this would be a good strategy. To, a good way to get rid of his bombs would be placing Din's fire directly on them when he plants bombs on the stage. His jab, you should watch out for. It'll halt most of your approaches. In fact, what you don't you don't want to approach at all. You want to be counter-offensive against Link. You want to punish his approach by teledashing and dash dancing um, so that he can't approach you very well. And then once he tries, you punish him for it. Worth mentioning is that land cancels are not that safe against Link, where he can just zare and forward tilt or up tilt or grab your land cancel.
Next up against Bowser. This is not an ideal stage to bring him in, to bring him to, due to the fact that he can get a lot of stage control because he can just cover most of the stage at once. It isn't the worst stage to take him to, it's just not the best. Um, teledashing is not the best option for him against him either. He doesn't have that that bad a matchup against Zelda, so be careful. He can quickly cover your options with teledashing just by standing there. Fair and bear just cover most of your teledash area. So just be very careful with doing that and only do it if you know it's going to work. Um, many of her multi-hit moves, which she use, kinda uses as like a safety net against a lot of characters, don't work either because of his super armor. Now granted, if his if he didn't ha if he wasn't throwing out a hitbox like there, then you c uh, your multi-hit moves will work. But he is throwing out a hitbox, so by the time that his armor might wear out, he might have already hit you. Um, also, a bad option is throwing out Dins to block his approach. Now, Bowsers don't like to approach, but if they ha are forced to, they will. So, um, blocking his approach with Dins is not the best option because he can just fare them and nair them. So, what you want to do, which I'll do in this match, is you want to put Dins directly on top of him. He has a He's a very large target, so it's actually really easy to do this. Just put a Dins on top of him like that to get a free up air. Oh, and when they're coming off the respawn platform, don't teledash on the platform they're closest to. Just a bad idea. Up air juggles do work against him. Um, not not up air with the second hit, with the first hit. I'll use it once or twice in this um, this match. Now about uh, Fountain of Dreams as a stage for Zelda or against Teledash Zeldas, it's actually a good stage. I consider it one of her better stages. Um, it's about the same as Battlefield in my opinion, because she can use the platforms to um, to Teledash with. And when they're low enough, she can actually get grabs off that off people, even if they're on the platform and she's on the ground. So I think it's a very good stage for her. Not the best, but it's pretty good. Um, if the moving platforms pick up Dins, they will literally pick it up and move it with them. So they won't be Dins won't be destroyed. And I do believe, I, I'm English all of a sudden, I do believe that the top platform is higher than that of the top platform of Battlefield. So some combos work on this stage that don't on Battlefield, like, um, or they work at later percents, like up smash, um, teledash, up smash combos. Those work a little bit, at a little bit higher percentages because of the higher platform. I'm pretty sure it's higher. There's a, there's an up smash, uh, uh, an up air follow up. I'm actually a big fan of up air follow ups. I don't think enough professional Zeldas use them, or even semi pro Zeldas use them. They're actually pretty useful, and I believe on Falco, I can't back this up with cold hard fact, but on Falco, um, the up smash combo is like a zero ninety percent combo. Um, the uh, the up smash forward air combo, but with the sparkle, that's what I'm calling the first hit of her up air. I believe it becomes an infinite, or not an infinite, a uh, zero death. I'm pretty sure it becomes a zero death. Even if it's not zero death, it it gets you to maybe about 
mm, zero one hundred, maybe at least. Well, now that we've moved on to a new stage, I will talk about this stage first about the character, then about the stage. Um, Marth, I consider one to be one of Zelda's other bad matchups. He can completely destroy Dins; they aren't a problem for him. The lightning kick isn't either, because he can easily outrange it with his sword. And um, teledashing isn't, and Dins aren't, and lightning kicks aren't either. So she's reduced to trying to contend with movement options, and I actually think she can do that, even even though Marth has a superior dash dance and wave dash. I think that she can contend with his movement with um, with her teledash and wave dashes and dash dancing. Now about the stage, the stage is actually really bad for Zelda's um, Zelda's teledash because you know she can't she doesn't have the maneuvering that she did before in Battlefield. She ha kind of ha is reduced to um, up smash up smash combos or um, up smash up air, and she can't really chase very well on the stage, and she can't mix it up where she teledashes from the gazebo right there to the other platform. Now she can, but the problem with this is, is then if she tries to fall through to do an aerial, because of the big gap in between the roof of the, um, the right archway and the ground, if she falls down, her aerial approach, what she's doing, is becomes very obvious. So, it's, she's pretty limited on the stage. Especially against characters like uh, Roy, where they can just combo her like crazy even with these platforms, and she can't do much. Din's fire doesn't work either because it just such a there's so much real estate on this stage that they can just get around Din's. The land cancel is slightly nerfed on the stage too, because of the fact that the stairs sometimes you won't get the the cancel on it. So I find this to be one of Zelda's bad stages. Now what you want to do against Marth is never fall into movement patterns. Always switch it up, just as long as switching it up doesn't mean doing something foolish. Like um, in about a minute ago, I did a thing where I think I hit him with an up smash and then I teleported to the to the ledge and then I jumped up and got a nair on him. That's the kind of stuff I mean. Mixing it up so he can't predict where you're going to end up so he, he ends up kind of having to just act like he's a neutral and constantly dash dance and move around so he's a, a moving target. So if you do that and throw in dins wherever you can I find this matchup is a little bit more manageable. Now, although I do have a tip for if you struggle with the Marth matchup, and that is switch to Sheik. The matchup is the same from Melee. Just switch to Sheik, and Sheik has a slight adva advantageous matchup against Marth. Use it. A lot of pro Zeldas, they don't use her Sheik option, and they kind of suffer for it. If you're going to play Zelda, learn both characters. If you're going to play Sheik, learn both characters. And finally, I believe this is the last match. This is Zelda versus Mario, another one of Zelda's bad matchups in my opinion. There isn't much she can do against pills. Naru's love is a reflector, yes, I know that. Before you start saying in the comments that I don't know it's a reflector, it is. But even land cancelled, it doesn't 
it's actually punishable. The land cancel is punishable against the pills because he can just follow in with an air or a, a wave dash down smash. This is actually fairly bad for Zelda. The teledash is kind of defeated because of pills. Um, Dins are kind of defeated because Mario can really eat them up with pills and nair. Just so many of her options are now gone. Um, I know I keep going back to the diamond dive. It's partially because I discovered it, but the diamond dive, not that great of an option against Mario either because his up air juggles keep her in hit stun long enough that she can't use the diamond dive. Even if she did, he could punish it. So, just be very careful in this matchup and stay around mid range or pre uh, make sure you can't use pills. Although I found that actually switching to Sheik is actually a better option against Mario because her Nair and Bear can eat up pills and outrange pretty much everything he has. Um, funny story, I, I actually went to, I was at a tournament last week and a Mario brought me to a, um, brought me to Yoshi's Story, I was playing Zelda, right at the beginning of the match, I didn't even think to I didn't even consider it. I switched to Sheik before he could get anything set up, and he wasn't expecting that, and I just totally dominated him because my bear and uh, Nair just totally outranged everything he had, and he was on Yoshi's story, and it was really bad for him. He didn't even know I had a, a Sheik, so it was a big surprise to him as well. So... If you learn up a Sheik, you can take people by surprise, and it's kind of used for mind games. One thing I tend to do, because Mario can really, he can just wave dash in and grab you, and his grab game's pretty good against Zelda, is I place a Dins at my feet. I don't do it here, but I place a Dins at my feet, and so if he comes in for a grab or anything, it's going to clash. For whatever reason, my CPU Mario tends to SD by wave dashing. I mean, not wave dashing, air dodging off stage. And I I actually played maybe about three or four matchups against Mario, and I scrapped them all except this one because they SD three or more, uh, two or three more times by air dodging off stage, and this was the best one out of those f three or four. So for some reason, they do that. Project M needs to fix some of the CPU stuff. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but actually, um, using up the out of shield isn't a terrible idea against some characters, because it has relatively quick startup, and the hitbox comes out there quickly as well. Well, that, I just said the same thing, but it comes out quickly as well, so you can take many people by surprise with it, and it can set up for um, up B juggles. Oh, and also against some short characters like Squirtle and Pikachu, it's kind of some of her only options out of shield because Up Smash doesn't hit them because they're so short. Here's an example of how Mar um, I'm not I'm personally not good against Mario. 
He's at 141 damage. I could finish him any time I could get a hit in, but watch. Actually, that wasn't the match I thought it was. Um, that's gonna that's gonna be it for Wing It Wednesdays on Teledashing. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time for the next Wing It Wednesday, or actually the next Meteor Monday. Now, I have to say something first. This is not going to be a weekly thing. I have a another channel called Pal Plays. It's a Let's Play channel, and I couldn't cannot because of school. I cannot sustain both channels on a weekly basis. So this channel is going to be maybe every other week or e any time I have the opportunity, but I'll make it known now that if a Meteor Monday comes out, the Wing It Wednesdays will come out the Wednesday after the Monday. So the Meteor Mondays and the Wing It Wednesdays will be in the same week. So just clear that up, just so you guys know that it's not going to be a Meteor Monday comes out, and two weeks later, the Wing It Wednesday comes out. They will always come out in pairs. Okay, so I'll see you next time for Wing It Wednesdays. This is DSS signing off.